From a very early age, even in graduate school, I uh, always loved to teach. And I've always loved to teach, um, in part because I myself went to a small liberal arts college uh, and have um, incredible memories uh, of the power of my own liberal arts education in launching me, and not just in launching me, but in, in getting me to think about and ask the key questions uh, that uh, really have shaped my thinking going forward and by the key questions, why, how, who, when, where, really the, the, the big questions um, that higher education inspires. And one of the things that's fantastic about a small liberal arts college experience is that it is a, a unique moment in a person's life. There's really no other time uh, after they graduate that they will ever be in that um, high octane environment of learning and questioning with a diverse range of people from all over the globe, all socioeconomic groups, races, classes, ethnicities. And that exposure in an environment with a faculty that's dedicated to, um, to, to opening their minds and to learning with them and to teaching them is an incredible experience and that's really what keeps drawing me back. So I've been drawn to the questions of diversity really from the beginning of my academic life. Uh, my scholarship is focused on questions of race and ethnicity um, and the status of minorities in larger majority societies. Um, and really focusing on the question of what makes minority integration successful and, uh, and how minorities um, and different groups can interact without losing what's distinctive and special about them. Um, so this scholarly interest has also really animated my uh, life as a professor, as an educator, and as an administrator on um, university and college campuses. And in part, I think that's because campuses have become um, sort of unique sociological spaces in which people from different walks of life are living together in much closer pro proximity than you would find in other diverse spaces. So a, a city, for example, would be a highly diverse space, but um, people from different classes and different groupings are often not living in the same neighborhoods, much less the same building. But on college campuses, uh, you have that kind of level of interaction going on. And not surprisingly, in those moments of contact, there's often misunderstanding. Um, now, as educators, we know that out of misunderstanding can come real moments of enlightenment and education. But when I think about as an educator what our job is uh, on our campuses, it's really to help students get through that moment, and not just students, staff, faculty, uh, all of us are really learning how to live together in community uh, in successful ways. I have really reveled in the life of uh, being a member of a campus, really beginning back uh, from when I was in college myself, um, in graduate school, uh, in my professional life as a faculty member, and then as an administrator. Uh, I find tremendous joy uh, in interacting with students and staff and faculty. Um, and honestly, I don't know the source of the joy exactly, um, but what I think it is is that um, I find people fascinating. And the communities that we build together, the college campuses that we build together, um, are such a fascinating mix of diverse peoples um, who are trying to figure out how to live together and work together, and most importantly, learn together. And it's such a combustible cocktail for um, asking questions and uh, engaging with the world. Um, there's really nothing like it in any other quarter of the world that I've ever found. Uh, and so I keep coming back. And it doesn't mean there aren't days of frustration. That's part of uh, being on a, on a college campus. Um, but, uh, but it's actually working through those moments um, and re-engaging with the mission, which is learning, um, that is incredibly exciting. And that, for me, is full of joy.
Although I've served as an administrator for several years, I've never stopped thinking of myself as a member of the faculty. Uh, I am both an administrator and a professor of history and Judaic studies. Um, and I see those as complementary, not as conflictual identities. Um, in fact, uh, everything I know about college uh, and campus administration has come from years of working as a faculty member with students in an engaged community on a campus. Um, that doesn't mean that administrators and faculty don't sometimes come at questions and problems from different perspectives. Um, and that's not surprising. Administration is uh, often top down and has the whole uh, in view, whereas faculty are, are uh, much more often bottom up and have a particular set of questions or concerns uh, that are derived from where they sit in the college and university structure. Um, but. Uh, but those perspectives are generative. It is in conversations between them uh, and among people who sit in different roles in a college that we can um, together figure out the best direction. I have always known that Williams was an extraordinary institution, and I've had the pleasure over the last few months as I've engaged in this process to really learn much more about why Williams occupies this spot. Um, and it is in that process uh, that I have become um, so deeply drawn to this opportunity. Uh, the combination of the incredible student to faculty ratio, which is really unparalleled in the uh, landscape of higher education on liberal arts colleges, um, the obvious talent of the student body, likewise the extraordinary faculty who participate as educators, top-notch educators, but also uh, very often at the top of their research agenda in their fields. Really on every metric, an extraordinary campus. Um, and the, the opportunity to lead this campus into the next phase of its development is really too exciting to pass up. On college campuses across America, we often say that a liberal arts education can train you to do anything. That's a, uh, a statement in, that I heartily endorse and deeply believe in. Um, but I think we have to go further than that in explaining what is important about a liberal arts education. How does it train you to do everything? And the answer to that question is really in a set of competencies that students learn while they're studying things they're really curious about, really interested in, that they get to choose and explore on their own. So they, they pursue topics and questions uh, that draw them in. But while they're doing that, they get better at writing, at critical reading, at research, at problem solving, at data analysis, uh, at public speaking. Um, and these are skills they've worked on their whole lives, uh, but in that high octane four year experience that a liberal arts college education provides, they can make light years of advances on these competencies. And these are transferable skills that they take with them no matter what they do. Um, there is no profession in which somebody engages right now where they don't need to do research. There is no profession where somebody doesn't need to know how to write, uh, to solve problems, to analyze data. So they learn all of those skills while simultaneously learning how to learn, learning the value of learning for learning's sake, uh, and learning the explosive power of broadening the mind. Um, and to my mind, that is really the value of a liberal arts education. <laughs>